Hello, friends. Today, your favorite segment, Best Knockouts, is with you. That means boredom for today is canceled. On August 26, 2005, Jamaican O'Neill Bell defended his IBF cruiserweight title against the South African Sebastian Rothman. The technical contender didn't plan to go down without a fight, engaging in nearly every battle with the dark-skinned puncher. The unexpected twist came in the 11th round, when Bell's fierce combination sent Rothman into a heavy knockout. A rematch between the greats Joe Lewis and Jersey Joe Walcott, held on June 25, 1948, was no easier for the Brown Bomber than their first meeting, where he controversially won on points. After 10 rounds... On July 12, 1951, the legendary Rocky Marciano achieved an impressive victory over the sturdy Rex Lane. A powerful right-hand strike from the Italian-American sent Lane into a heavy knockout. A long-range right that stuns Rex Lane, and then he crumples forward to the canvas. Referee Mark Kahn picks up the count. It's 10 and out for Rex Lane, who hasn't moved a muscle. He's really out. And Rocky waves are right on high. If Daniel Santos thought that defending the WBO welterweight title on December 16, 2000 would be an easy stroll, those thoughts quickly vanished during the fight. In the first round against Englishman Neil Sinclair, the fighters exchanged knockdowns. Yes, that's just showing that he is losing his confidence. He's not committing himself with his right hand or he's... Oh, there's a right hand, though! Look at that from Sinclair! Oh, boy! He's got Santos down first time he connected with it. In the second round, a lethal left cross from the Puerto Rican forced Sinclair to a bid farewell to his championship ambitions. And that's more dangerous. I'm not sure Sinclair's going to get out from this. He won't. It's over for him. Left cross, Ten. close in, counted out, over in round two. Well, he found the answer, Daniel Santos. He'd been tacked a bit with that right hand in the round, but there was the championship quality, and Sinclair really was out of it from the moment the punch landed. The referee... On November 15th, 2014, Argentine Jorge Sebastian Highland deeply disappointed the Irish fans, securing an unexpected victory over the local favorite and former title contender Matthew Macklin. A powerful right-hand strike from the Latin American in the 10th round marked the end of an exciting showdown. Marked up around the eyes, reddening on the bridge of the nose. Jamie Moore suffering along with every Matthew Macklin fan in this arena. Highland at the end, continuing to stalk him. Total fight with him. He needs a knockdown. But first, he's got to start winning a couple of rounds. It's been a while since that happened. And straight on him again. You know, Highland. Said, said in the stages, then go. Oh, got him. And he's been wiped out. Single punch, no count. Disaster for Matthew Macklin. Delight for Jorge Sebastian Highland, who celebrates but all the air just got sucked out of this arena, and that was a shattering finish for Matthew Macklin. And is that the end of what's been a terrific career? That was a nasty... On August...
The fight on July 2, 2011 ended brutally for the former European champion Terry Dunstan. The former interim world champion Ola Afalabi didn't plan to linger in the ring, delivering a perfect right-hand knockout in the first round. Shula passed a little bit of damage on his left eye. Oh, what a punch that was. That's a finisher. Great right hand. Terrific right hand. And Terry Dunstan is not going to get up from that one. It's going to be all over in this opening round. And the referee has waved it over. And what a peach of a shot that was from Ola Apalabi. They say he's not a noted puncher. Well, tell Terry Dunstan. And what a terrific punch. The defense of the WBA middleweight title, held on December 9, 2011, didn't cause much trouble for Gennady Golovkin. Former world title contender LeJuan Simon was harshly knocked out in the first round by a powerful left. Оба левый боковой, все, все. Так. По-моему, все. Ой-ой-ой. Нет, ну я как-то подольше рассчитывал. Ну там глубокий нокаут. А November 19, 2011, in a bout between former contenders for the heavyweight world title, Michael Grant turned out to be luckier than Francois Botha. The South African boxer looked better throughout the fight, leading confidently on all judges' scorecards after 11 rounds. But in the 12th round, the tall American, taking advantage of his opponent's fatigue, landed a precise right-hand punch, sending Botha into a knockout. <laughs> On January 13th, 1954, Ezra Charles achieved a brilliant victory over Bob Satterfield. In the second round, Charles's impressive combination sent his opponent into a heavy knockout. Charles missed that shot by just a slight mark. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's not going to get up. Eight, nine. It's all over. Edgar Charles with one devastating left hook. Locking out Bob Satterfield after one minute. On April 4th, 1990, the formidable Donovan Ruddick once again confirmed his reputation as a fearsome puncher. In the fourth round of the fight with former world champion Michael Dokes, the Canadian rocked his opponent, who only stayed on his feet because of the ropes behind him. Ruddick discharged a furious series of blows to the defenseless opponent, sending him into a deep knockout. Not for the faint-hearted. The bout between Colombian Prudencio Cardona and Mexican Antonio Avalar held on March 20th, 1982, ended incredibly beautifully and brutally. In the first round, a series of punches from the Colombian boxer sent the former WBC lightest weight champion into a silent knockout. <laughs> 
está disparando, pero con ganas de veras de liquidarlo, y ahí lo clava, y se clava, pero dramáticamente, se golpeó la cabeza contra la lona, y ahí se queda para la cuenta definitiva y penal, Coño Avelar, Coño Avelar que está en malas condiciones, el médico sube para atenderlo inmediatamente, lo pone en horizontal, está conmocionado, Coño Avelar, hay verdadero... On July 18, 1987, the great Mike McCallum brightly defended his WBA title in the first middleweight against the claims of former world champion Donald Curry. The match was by no means easy for the champion. And after four rounds, Curry confidently led on the scorecards of all three judges. The magnificent left hook from Mike settled all doubts about the winner in the fifth round. Very well, Tim. Good right hand to the body. It's a good combination. Left hook on the right hand on the chin. Classic combination from Donald Curry. But that left hand. So McCallum, that perfect punch is certainly euphoria for him and euphoria for Lou Duva because uh, for McCallum, as we said, uh, there was a... Julian Jackson is rightfully considered one of the most formidable punchers in boxing history. On July 30th, 1988, defending his WBA title in the first middleweight, he once again confirmed his reputation. In the second round, he sent the contender Buster Drayton into a knockdown. And in the third, he spectacularly knocked him out with a powerful left. On March 25, 1989, Michael Nunn made a spectacular statement. Defending his IBF title in the middleweight against the assaults of the former world champion Sumbo Columbi in an incredibly brutal manner. In the first round, the champion harshly knocked down his opponent with a powerful left straight, depriving him of even the slightest chance to continue the fight. Notably, Columbi never lost prematurely before or after this fight. So far with the early edge to none. Major Lee 